Hello there and welcome to my channel. I'm Christian and you're watching A Dev Story. Today I will be talking a little bit about uh, solid principles. But first, if you haven't watched my previous video regarding object orientation, I suggest you to go there first. So let's continue talking about solid principles. When you when you're programming, you can follow good practices in order to avoid issues, to make your software easier to understand and also more robust and maintainable. Some of these good practices sometimes come in the form of principles. And in object orientation, one of the most important principles is the solid principles. So let's look a little bit at what they are. Solid stands for single responsibility, open closed, list count substitution, interface segregation, and dependency inversion. Let's start with single responsibility. Single responsibility defined by Uncle Bob is a class should have only one reason to change. So it's also called high cohesion, or it's when you try to have high cohesion in a class. The idea is to try to narrow down the behavior a class can have and motivations to rewrite it. For example, let's imagine a vehicle class. So if you have a class vehicle where you have other responsibilities regarding the whole uh, vehicle, for example, including engine or tires and methods like get engine oil or get fuel level or get air pressure could uh, end up with a class that is very big and it has a lot of responsibility into knowing what specifically does it mean to get the engine oil. While you could split that class in multiple ones like engine, tires, windshield, etc., where you could just uh, have a specific methods in those classes that take it, that know more about the details on how to implement it and, and don't have too much responsibility. Then we get to the open closed principle. Basically, the open closed principle says that a class should be open for extension but closed for modification. While the single responsibility principle refers to the purpose of a class, like the internals, like how many responsibilities do you have, this open closed principle promotes more reutilization, like having external, uh, like move the responsibility externally, right? So when you split the responsibility of a class, you should do so in a way that the behavior can be extended or replaced instead of uh, having to modify it. Going back to the vehicle example, having different type of vehicles like cars or trucks or SUVs or even tires that have a specific uh, specialization that could be re reused uh, between, between them, right? So in the case of the vehicle, for example, you wouldn't have to implement acceleration in all the classes. So you could just have a vehicle class where you implement acceleration and then cars and trucks could have a specializations on top of that. Then we get to the list cup substitution principle. The definition is you should be able to change an instance using a subtype and your code should still work. You may have seen some code where the interface or superclass has a method that the subclass implements with the throw new unsupported exception. This is a violation of the list cup substitution principle. The reason being because you should be able to change the, any class that depends on that interface to change the instance using your specific class implementation and it, should be, it shouldn't affect the other class. But if you are throwing an unsupported exception, then you might break the other code. Imagine, for example, having a vehicle class with a method called shift to change the gears. Due to the nature, electric cars can shift. So if we extend electric from vehicle, it would be a violation of the list of substitution principle. We will be forced to implement a method that won't work, either by throwing an exception or by doing nothing, that, or something that doesn't make sense for a specific class in this case, electric, electric cars. So we will see in the next principle how to fix this issue. We get to the next principle, the interface segregation principle. Basically, what it means is that it's better to have too many interfaces than having too little. This is related to the previous principles that we have talked about, especially the list scope and the single responsibility principles. If a class does too much because the interface is forcing it to, replacing it with another class will be harder and you might end up having to implement methods that maybe doesn't make too much sense for your case. For example, the electric or the vehicle example that we saw before. Going back to the example of vehicles and electric cars with the shift method, we can fix this by splitting the interface or the sup superclass in two types or in two subclasses, for example, combustion and electric cars. Combustion cars will have the shift method while the electric cars won't. Finally, we get to the dependency inversion principle. The dependency inversion principle says one should depend on abstraction and not concrete instances. Again, related with all the rest of the principle that we already saw, 
instead of having a specific car with the specific instances of uh, tires, for example, you could have a generic interface implementing tires and all the type of tires and your specific vehicle have a dependency on those on, on that interface or on that class. And this will basically make your code more flexible. So this would be solid principles in a nutshell. There are other principles like try, don't repeat yourself or keys, keep it simple. And other heuristics that you can use to improve the way you code and have better software. Like for example, design patterns that I will be covering in my next video. Don't miss it. Keeping these principles in mind can help you write good code, provide better feedbacks in code reviews, and also have more efficient implementation discussion with your peers. So they are quite important to, to keep in mind. And that will be all for today. Thank you again for watching. And if you like the video, just don't forget to click the like button. If you have any doubts or want to comment something about a video or provide feedback, just write down the comments below. And of course, if you want to keep knowing more about computer science topics, don't forget to click the subscribe button. And that will be all for today. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.